All right, guys, I'm trying something new. I'm going to do my podcast live. So just for, uh, just for fun, we're going to do a live podcast. I'm going to wait a couple of minutes, make sure you, a lot of people get in, get into the room, because if I start talking without too many people in the room, and this is completely unannounced. I've not announced this. I've not posted this. this is none of my members know. Janet doesn't even know. She doesn't even know I'm going to be live, and I'm already live for 26 seconds. So, And I've got a great topic. This is a topic that a, um, a viewer asked me to do previously, so um, I'm doing it today. Um, what we're going to talk about today is senior dogs, older dogs, senior dogs, dogs in the later stages of their life, and all that. And it's a topic that's very, very, very close to my heart. So we're going to get into it. We're going to do, hey, Donald, good to see you. <laughs> uh, completely unplanned. Completely unplanned. Um, okay, so okay, we're getting good people in here now. Let me see. We've got, we've got 39 people. Time for me to start talking. Um, you know, I'm not going to talk about dog fights today, Donald, but that is a topic that's coming. Uh, you know, and all kinds of dog fights. I got a lot of different information. Um, and vitamin Z, that is what I'm going to talk about today, is senior dogs. Dane, great to see you. Um, Hey, Anthony, good you're here. Okay, so since, I'm gonna, since this is going to be a podcast, I've got, I'm going to have to edit this a couple different ways, and the main way I've got to edit it is that it goes in the podcast. So we're, we're live, we're on YouTube live, talking today about senior dogs. I've got a list of some of the things I want to do. I kind of want to be more um, direct about what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to really focus on what I want to talk about. And there's some different things. So first of all, senior dogs are something that is extremely close to my heart, something I love, love, love. And that is when a dog gets to the, <clears throat> those end stages of their life, it really gives you a chance to give back to them. Because I, I see these dogs all the time as puppies and when they're working dogs, they have so much to give. They give us so much. They, they, we play with them, we train with them, we, we benefit from them in, you know, whether it's a service dog or, you know, a seeing eye dog, an assistance dog, or just a pet. You know, the dog really, really increases your life. It, 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 it makes your life so much better. So that when the dog finally gets to these end stages of their lives, there's so many people who dump them. And that, that's a huge pet peeve of mine with all my work in the shelters. Um, it just drives me batty. Like when I see an old dog in a shelter, it, it, it's, it's the worst thing I can possibly see. Because I get it. You know, some people are really irresponsible. They're morons. They're stupid. They're selfish. They're narcissistic. They're myopic. They're, they're, they're stupid. They're mean. And they dump dogs in shelters. But to dump... A senior dog in a shelter takes an ultimate level of low, an ultimate level of, of complete despicability. So what I want to do is talk about some of these things, because caring for your senior dog is the very, very, very best thing you're going to do, right? I've done it. We have Boz now. I've cared for other older dogs in my life. I had my dog, Silly, who was only eight but for the, and I, if you ever want to listen to a great podcast, listen to my podcast on grieving the loss of your pet, where I talk about this incredible journey I took with Silly, in particular his last 30 days of his life, where I did nothing but care for this dog. And I'll be honest with you, it's one part of my life that I'm th probably the proudest of, you know, among the proudest, not just the proudest, but very, very, very proud of. So think about this. When do dogs start to get old? And, and we really want to address that because having the answer to that is really going to give us a, um, an insight on things. So um, first of all, small, medium, and large dogs age very differently. So Usually small and medium dogs will live a lot longer than large breed dogs. So Great Danes, Mastiffs, all those dogs generally don't live that long. Now, that being said, my friend Kevin has a German Shepherd who's 14 and a half years old. It's just completely insane. I mean, you could only pray to God that you should have that kind of time with your, with your animal. Um, most Shepherds are going to make 10, 12 or so years. Um, same with Malinois, same with, you know, Dutch Shepherds, any of those breeds. 
medium-sized dogs, you know those are dogs like the 35 to 45, 50 pound range, those will live a little bit longer. And small dogs, for some reason, just live a long time. Uh, I have no idea why. You know, I, I don't, I really don't know. But they do. Bosman, for example, is just about 18 years old. And we had a really, really close call a couple of weeks ago where we thought we lost him. And it's going to bring tears to my talking about it, but I'm going to, I'm going to share a little bit of it with you. Um, we just found him very lifeless, very listless. He c- couldn't hold his head up. He couldn't stand up. He was falling down. And we, we thought it was almost that time. And uh, I didn't want to give up on him. And Janet didn't want to give up on him. So we took him to the doctor, had him checked out. But now we made a promise to ourselves. And that promise was we're not going to have him be a pin cushion, right? We weren't going to have him be an experiment and leave him at the vet and do all these tests and stuff like that. We thought it would be better to let him die naturally in our arms, in our home, than to put him through, you know, all these crazy treatments that they do. Now, people who do that, I get it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just wasn't, it's not a decision we wanted to make. And it's something we've talked about um, a, a lot, that when it comes to be Boz's end, we're going to accept it as, as what it is, and we're going to hold him, we're going to be with him, and we're going to let him go. And if, if he's in any pain or suffering, we'll help him over. Um, I think that's a huge thing, and I don't know if I could really make that decision without the strength of Janet with me. Um, she's amazing like that. So, um, and again, he's 18. So we, we nursed him back. We got him some fluids. You know, they checked him. His heart's good. His liver good. Blood is good. Everything is perfect. We got, um, we put some fluids. He had a little upper respiratory thing. We gave him some antibiotics. I started giving him more chicken and, and pumpkin in his food. Um, I watched him. I, mean, I was, every couple hours, I would be holding him. I would be just caring for him. And he would, you know, pee himself and stuff like that. And, you know, that doesn't bother me, by the way. So um, it, we, we really cared for him immensely and, and prayed and gave him a lot of love and, 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 and cared for him, gave him his medicines and all this stuff. And boom, he just bounced back. And I think that was one of the most amazing things. Spam. Um, one of the most amazing things, and it's something that I just love that we, um, we did. Right, so now Boz is back. Boz is, you know, at no greater risk of dying than he was before, um, before any of this happened. But he's 18 years old. So, um, what's the average lifespan of dogs? And like I say, it really is going to depend on the the breed of the dog, the size of the dog, also the genetics of the dog. You can have a really great dog, and that dog just got the short straw, and was dealt a bad hand, and is going to just be predisposed to something, right? I had a Sharpe, long-haired Sharpe that I had um, adopted. The dog only lived to be, you know, I mean, he's only lived with me for four months, and I'm assuming he was like four or five years old. We had, um, we have all our dogs now who are, you know, Jimmy's 10, Maya's 10, going on 10, Goofy just turned 10, and um, Dwayne is only two, really young. But, um, you don't know, right? You can kind of take a stab at it that a smaller dog is going to live 15 years or so. Uh, a medium dog is going to live 10 to 12 years. And a great dog like a Mastiff or a Great Dane or something like that, you might only get eight, eight or seven, eight, nine years out of them. So let's look at what's really important, okay? And, and it does make a difference. And it is what you feed your dog. And not only what you feed your dog, but how much you feed your dog, Right? I'm a big proponent of not overfeeding dogs. I think most people, especially in the States, overfeed their dogs. I, I see so many dogs that are so grossly overweight, whether it's in the shelter, whether it's in private practice, whether it's just walking down the street, these dogs are fed so much bad food and such abundant quantities, right? Um, that it makes the dog f- overweight. And being overweight has immense repercussions on your system, on your kidneys, on your liver, on your heart, um, on your joints, not yours, on your dog's joints. And um, I, I want to really focus that this, this podcast too, that you think about when you have an older dog, don't overfeed them, right? Sometimes dogs will skip a meal. It's when It becomes quite problematic when dogs skip multiple meals. But think about how much nutrition they really need. And then you're going to really need to think about a good quality food 
that's going to get that for them. And when dogs are older, a lot of people will give their dogs more um, uh, chicken and, and vegetables and home cooked meals. And I think that's all great, right? I mean, anything you can do to get the dog a little bit better quality, more nutrition is great all along, all along the dog's lifespan. But in their later years, you just kind of want to keep things kind of simple. And sometimes the kibble is too hard on the digestive system. Sometimes it's just not nutritious enough. And I really talk about that with a lot of foods. Be super careful what you feed your dogs. But in the later years, you know, if your dog's not eating and you want to kind of help them along and you know you're not overfeeding them, really consider things like adding a little chicken to it, putting a little Parmesan cheese on it or something like that. And I mean with in reason, right? I can't have you thinking like, oh, I've got to gorge my dog on, on food, so I'm going to give him a whole chicken. Think about it. Be really careful. Don't do too many great abrupt changes in a dog's later years because it's going to be an issue with you and your dog because it might not be what your dog is used to. So if the dog is 15 years old and you're suddenly going to feed the dog a completely raw diet, it might be a shock on the dog's system. Make those transitions slow and think about those changes earlier on before the dog gets too old. But a good quality food, some people say, well, do I switch my dog to a senior food? It's not necessarily that important because dogs need food and food is food. When you start getting into this puppy food and senior food and active food and this food and that food, active food sometimes has more proteins for the dog if the dog is really working out hard and muscles need more protein. That's great. But overfeeding them is, is probably the biggest, biggest, biggest mistake um, that you can possibly make with your dog. So that being said, those of you who are on the podcast don't know this, but I'm actually doing this live on YouTube. So we're sitting here live right now. And I, I put the podcast up later today because I haven't put it up yet. Um, and usually put it up Thursday. So this one's running a little bit late, but it's an interesting topic. I'm watching your comments. I really can't, I'm not going to address too many questions in the um, things here. I see you guys saying hi, and I, I appreciate that. And I love it. If this works out, I might end up doing more <clears throat> podcasts live because it kind of kills two birds with one stone for me. But senior dogs <clears throat> really need some special attention. So the other thing we talk about too with senior dogs is supplements. And supplements is something that I think is really important for the dog because there are certain aches and pains dogs get. For example, you can give the dog um, joint supplements. I really like doing more of something what's called a golden paste, which is a turmeric supplement, which helps inflammation. It helps um, fight cancer. It, it, there's a lot of really great benefits to it. Something you can Google. I don't have the ingredients. I have to look them up just like you. So you'll have to look them up too. But the, you know, good supplements helps dogs immensely, especially alleviating pain. Um, CBD oil is great. It alleviates stress. Turkey tail mushroom is great. Um, a lot of these things I have on my, on my Amazon store. You can look at them there and you'll see that um, this is really, in my opinion, the single best thing in your life is caring for a senior dog. I swear, I know it sounds really simple or stupid but caring for a senior dog I don't I don't know why but I love it like I, I love caring for Boz it's just it makes me so happy to know that I can give him something back for all the joy that that dog gave to Janet I mean I know he gave her so much joy because she talks about him with with just these beautiful glowing eyes when she talks about the agility they did and the travels they did and, and all this it's just really really amazing Right. So um, let's look at the, you know, the food we talked about, good quality food. If you're going to do home cooked, add some supplements in, um, make sure the dog has supplements for their joints and for, you know, aches and pains and stuff like that. And also for anxiety. Sometimes dogs will get a little dementia and stuff like that as they get older. Let's look at exercise. And somebody asked a question, um, how old can a Malinois work protection? And it, the, the important thing is it really depends on the dog. I mean, Goofy is still spry and he's still going strong and all this stuff. But I, I'm very conscientious about his abilities, right? I mean, I have to look at how strong is his body. I, I do, this is something I didn't even have on my list here, but I do a wellness check every year with my dogs. When, after age f six or seven or eight, I'd say seven or eight, 
I think it's imperative to go out and do a complete physical on your dogs, do a complete blood panel, do an ultrasound, do x-rays, and get the dog thoroughly checked out. Because a lot of things can creep up that you can treat early on, but you can't treat if it's too late, right? So, so I have this great vet at Warner Center in, here in, the, in L.A., um, and she does this wellness check that, that um, I, I don't know other vets might do it. I know Dr. Jackson does it there. And it, it, it's an amazing thing. It's just it's so great because, like I said, x-rays, ultrasounds, blood work, a urinalysis, um, and an overall checkup on the dog. And I think it's imperative. I mean, it'll catch things that you may not have caught. And don't let little things go by the wayside, right? Don't ignore things. If your dog is doing something weird, sneezing too much, coughing, um, limping, anything, anything, go to a vet, have it checked out. If you, um, insurance, right? I mean, I've had insurance on my dogs. I've used Trupanion for years. Um, you, there's a link on my site that, that um, will send you to True Opinion. Um, but it, it saved me lots of money. Think about the idea of keeping an eye on things and really watching the dog as you get older, as your dog gets older, I should say. And that will give you a big key into staying ahead of things, right? You'll catch things early. If you get my friend um, Drew, his little plot hound mix got this growth on his on his back and it grew bigger. He took him to Dr. Dean in Malibu and boom, the, the, it was cancer. He took it off, got the Greek clean margins, completely cancer free. Had he ignored it, it could have gotten to the cells and could have killed his dog. And Lucky is 12 years old. Drew's had Lucky since he was eight weeks old. I was with him when he got him. Um, over-exercising older dogs can put undue stress onto the dog. Now, if the dog is active, Goofy and Maya are super active, 10 years old, they're still on the treadmill running like crazy. They still work hard. They're, they're super driven dogs. So they can do a lot more than a dog who hasn't had that activity. Jimmy is almost 10 years old, and he also has an amazing drive. He's still doing agility and all this stuff because Janet was really careful with him and watched him and took care of him the whole time as he was getting older and as he was growing up, so he can still do fun things. You don't want to overstress the dog when they're younger because then they can't do things when they're older. And that's an important consideration for you to think about. So as the dog gets older, the dog still needs exercise, right? With the exception of Boz, who's 18, but Boz still zooms around our backyard and has the greatest time. But you're going to not do as much running or jumping or you know turning and stuff like that with the dog. You're going to, more than anything, Make sure the dog continues a good series of movement. Um, again, all of you guys checking in live here on YouTube, um, I'm not really answering questions as much unless I just grab something um, as I look down because I, I'm doing this is a, this is a podcast, right? So those of you who are listening on the podcast, surprise for you, I'm doing this live on YouTube at the same time. So um, anyway, I, the question I've gotten before was, you know, how long can the can a Malinois do? protection is going to depend on the dog. I mean, I would think nine or 10 is going to be pretty much the end of it. You don't want too many things for the dog jamming or jumping or falling or twisting and turning. Those are going to be problems for the dog. So as the dog gets older, for example, with Bosman, one of the things we, we have stairs in our house here. One of the things we really had to think about was limiting his movement. So for example, a dog at that age, especially a small dog like Boz, tripping down the stairs, could, could be death, right? Could break his back, break his neck, or anything like that. But um, the, the idea of limiting his movement, so we keep him in a crate, we take him out every couple hours, we play with him, we hold him, we kiss him, we, you know, we give him a bath if he needs it, we take him out in the grass, we let him run around. But he doesn't have free access to roam around the house because he could trip up in something, he could fall down the stairs. And that's really our biggest concern. Really, really think about that with your dog. If you have stairs in your house, don't let the dog have free access. Either crate them or put a baby gate up or something to keep them from falling down the stairs. As dogs get older, their sight diminishes and their coordination diminishes. So they could really, really get hurt in, be in the freedom. So the freedom could be a detriment. So when we take Boz outside, he runs around the backyard. He's out there with Maya and Goofy and Jimmy and Dwayne and playing and doing his things. And he goes underneath the other dogs. And there, everybody is so careful around Boz because everybody knows how much we love Boz. 
And think about in your home that if you have hardwood floors or tile floors, that you start to think about putting things down like throw rugs or area rugs so the dog can get their footing a lot better than they can on tile. Tile, hardwood floors, marble, any of those things are super hard for the dog to get a footing on. And as they get older, their joints are weaker, so they can't stand up as well as they, as well as they should, right? Um, by the way, you guys who are doing super chats, thank you very much. Really kind of you. Not necessary. Appreciated, but not necessary. Thank you, though. Um, here's a big topic that comes into play with dogs, and it's, it's one of those... Um, issues that people oftentimes I've heard them putting dogs down for and it breaks my heart every time and that is incontinence right so if a dog pees or poos themselves because they can't get outside or because they're you know having a hard time holding it or something like that it's it's a tough one in my opinion to put some a dog down for right we wouldn't put a person down for it I think it's always that consideration right if I was in a certain stage of my life, where would I want to end my life? Where would I not want to go further with? And that is only through unrepairable suffering, right? Immense pain that won't get better. Diminishing quality of life. Peeing or pooing your pants, well, it's not that, right? It's not the end of the world. You can get diapers, you know, the dogs, you can get diapers, you can watch them, you can wipe them off, you can be aware of them. And it's if you live in a multi-story house or in an apartment or something, that's a decision you've got to think about. You've got to figure that out because that is going to happen. If your dog lives for a longer period of time than normal, then that dog will probably have some incontinence issues, right? It's going to pee or poo. And if you have really nice carpeting, it's going to get trashed. That's just the way it is. You're going to be redoing your carpeting. You're going to be doing uh, something that, that, that will make up for that. If you're going to even put, put pads down, you're going to have to do something. But the best thing is to give your dog regular chances to go outside and confine the dog so the dog doesn't go crapping somewhere on the side of the rug, or, you know, in the side of the room. But if they do it on a little pad or a little bed, it's not impossible to, um, to clean. It makes it a lot easier. So... Um, so again, I don't really believe in putting dogs down because they're incontinent. I think it's just, just too much. Um, think about also when you are, puppy pads are a great idea. Um, and a really important consideration is, right, you're going to want, most people are going to want to make sure they don't go without a dog. It's, it's a selfish thing, but I do it. But you don't want to be without a dog. So you start to think, can I bring a puppy in? And if the dog is, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, Sure, it's not a big deal because the dog is still spry. Some of the personality will rub off. The dog will probably be a good owner. But um, what you really, really want to look at is um, if you bring a young dog in with an old dog that's not able to really engage. And that's when it becomes super, super, super unfair to your dog. So you're going to bring in a young puppy that's going to be jumping around and playing and doing this, and it's knocking your dog down. A dog can't really get up, and it's super unfair. It's, it's critically unfair. So if you're going to bring another dog in, either do one of two things. Either you're going to do it where the, the old dog is in a crate and not interacting with the dog, which is not really fun for either dog, or you're going to bring a new dog in before your dog gets to a stage of his life where he can't stand properly or move properly. That's really, really, really important. So just a quick uh, interruption here. If you guys have questions, if you guys wanted more online dog training information, if you want to get great resources, ask me questions weekly, consider joining my site at robertcabral.com because there is the best online dog training resource available anywhere within that membership section. My YouTube channel has tons of videos, tons of free stuff, but my membership section at robertcabral.com is really full of detailed, long, long lessons that will give you all the information you really, really need. And there you can send me questions, and I answer those questions every single week. Um, so travel considerations. And travel considerations with old dogs are, are a two-way street. The first side of it is you traveling, right? If you're traveling and you have an older dog, what do you do with that dog? Can you board it? Can you have somebody staying at your house? Can you bring the dog with you? If it's an older dog, you can probably bring it with you. But if it's a bigger dog, like anything over 35 pounds or so, 
it's more problematic to bring the dog with you. It's also hard for that dog to be left alone, be left with somebody, because whoever's watching him is not going to understand the level of care that dog needs that you will. And you're not going to give them that care if you're not with them. So think about that as a consideration that, you know, I have somebody who I used who was fantastic with my dogs. And I think if, if I had to go somewhere, I could call her and have her watch my dogs. Of course, you know, if Janet or I have to go somewhere individually, we have each other, that's great. But if we have to go somewhere together, we need somebody who can watch our dogs. Think about that before you need it. Interview people. Think about who you know who could help you because that time is going to come. Your, your dog is going to be sick, then your mother or father or son or daughter or aunt or uncle is going to get sick and you're going to need to travel. And when that time comes, you're going to have to figure that out. So be sure that you have an option, right? Start thinking about that now. If you have a seven, eight, nine year old dog, think about that now. Because boarding them at a kennel for an older dog, for a dog that's 12, 13, 14 years old, is really not that fair, especially if they haven't been boarded there before. Now, if they've been boarded there before, fantastic. I think it's great. I don't think it's an issue. The dog can definitely go there and have fun and, and live you know, with their friends and everything like that. No big issues. OK, um, if you know, you're going to take your dog with you, it's a different story. You've got to think about, though, do you have enough with you? If you're in a hotel, your dog pees on the rug. You're going to bring pee, uh, pee pads. You're going to bring crate. Are you going to bring beds for the dogs? Are you going to bring your dog's medicines? Do you have enough medicine to make it through the amount of time that you're going to be there? Again, this is a topic I've never covered in any podcast <coughs> um, or in any, any um, video. So I do think it's really, really important. <coughs> Donald just said he watched my dogs for free, and that's very, very kind of you. Thank you. Um, that, you know, you have to make these considerations really, really early on because they will come to fruition. You're going to have to make these decisions and make sure you're aware what these decisions mean. So another thing that happens with dogs as they get older is their temperament changes. Just like our temperament changes, I've noticed my, my temperament changing as I've gotten older and older. Um, I still think I'm 30, but I'm not. I, I, I act like I'm 30, but I'm not. But I notice that you know you get you get more short-tempered with stuff, or you get more forgetful about things. I mean, I don't. But what was I just talking about? Oh yeah, <laughs> got you on that one. I <laughs> I um, I see these changes in dogs as well. So what really happens a lot with older dogs is they become a little bit more. Uh, short-tempered. So in other words, if a dog is young, they play and play and play, and that's all fine. But the, um, the older dogs are going to get a little bit more crabby. So in other words, they're not able to run around as fast or as hard or anything like that. So they end up getting crabby. So they'll snap at another dog. And if the younger dog doesn't understand that the dog, your, your older dog is doing that, he's going to snap back, right? And then you're going to have a fight, and that's not fair. So you must structure this. You must have absolute control over your dogs. And with, with, with our pack here, we have absolute control. There's no question in my mind that my dogs are not going to go off on one of the other dogs. And if they do, I have no doubt in my mind that I can control that. So when they get older, I don't bring new dogs in. I don't let them meet new dogs to play with because it's just it's a setup for disaster. And you don't want to do that. Um, somebody says, can you really leave a dog uh, that poos or pees to a friend, though? Well, that's you can't. And that's exactly what my point is. With an older dog, you have to understand the these decisions right you have to understand that there's implications to having an older dog so with boz we can take him with us we have somebody who can watch him but it's an easy dog boz is an 18 year old mini dachshund right he weighs maybe 10 pounds it's an easy easy dog to handle now when it gets to a size dog like goofy who's a 65 pound malinois or somebody who might have a 100 pound mastiff or you know or whatever that's a lot harder dog to give somebody to watch, right? Think about that really, really carefully. And also think about these things when you decide what kind of dog you're going to get next. Can you handle this? Are you going to be able to see this through all the way? Because the dog you get today should be with you until the day you bury them. I, I, I know that sounds really harsh, 
but that's what I think about. I never think, well, if it doesn't work out, then blah, blah, blah. It's always the life decision for me. It's that dog is going to be with me forever. So um, the, the temperament changes on the dog as they get older can be significant. The dog can get very edgy. The dog can get very fearful. And the dog can get somewhat aggressive, right? If the dog doesn't like what's going on, the dog might end up becoming very edgy. And it's not fun for a new dog, especially a puppy, because a puppy will learn really, really bad behaviors from a cranky old dog. Make sure the dog, your dog is able to handle that and be aware that the dog is getting older. The dog is having a harder time with movement and all those things might put together a, um, a personality that, you're, that you don't remember, that you never saw before. Um, uh, somebody said here that, you know, put together a vet kit for older dogs with extra meds, towels, eye wash pads, Neosporin, bandages, etc. And I think that's really, really important. Um, people oftentimes don't think of that. But you should have a little first aid kit or a little go bag and have your dog's medicines in there, have your dog's, um, you know, have a leash, a harness collar. Think about that too. With older dogs, you don't really, if they get weak necks and stuff like that, you're not going to have them on a, on a chain or, or even a martingale. You're going to want to put them on something very gentle. And Like with Boz, he's a very old, frail boy. We keep him on a harness. And you guys all know how I feel about harnesses. I hate harnesses. But... If the dog is really, really old and not getting anywhere, the harness is a really good tool. And the reason it is, is because you, um, you have an, able to, an ability to lift the dog, stabilize the dog, and control the dog with that harness. You can also get these um, easy ups, which helps, the, helps lift the dog downstairs or into a car or anything like that. And get your dog used to these things, like a ramp for your car, before the dog really, really, really needs it. So, um, so somebody asked, Andy asked, if a senior citizen should get a dog if they may die before the dog. And that's a really tough thing. If they can plan on, you know, somebody taking over for the dog, I think it's great. But, you know, there was a program that the shelters had, and it was called Seniors for Seniors. And it was senior citizens who would get senior dogs. And I think it was a brilliant idea because it's a perfect, you know, situation for a senior as long as it's not a big dog that's going to need heavy lifting or anything like that. Think about... Um, that it's a really important thing. I'm going to look at a couple of questions here. Um, if anybody has has a question here, I'm going to use it for the end of the podcast. Um, and remember, this is on my podcast. And if you don't check out my podcasts, then um, please do. The podcasts are available on Apple, on uh, TuneIn, on uh, on on Google. And I'm just I just got a notification today they're going to be on Amazon. We're, we got approved for Amazon. So. They will be everywhere. Um, so this, Shruti says, my dog is getting bed sores as she is old German Shepherd and has hip dysplasia. She can't move her back legs and keeps laying down. How do I help her with that? I would get one of those easy up harnesses, you know, one of those uh, pick up, pick them up harness. There it is. Um, you can use those on the dog. You can walk the dog around. Just make sure to move her from side to side. Put some foam down so she's not laying on a hard floor. Those are really, really good things for the dog and that's what you really got to think about you know and remember this now the one thing that I want to close on close this podcast on is the hardest hardest things that we really need to talk about and that's that, that last decision you're going to make that decision you're going to make for the dignity of your dog and that is the single hardest thing you'll ever do right I mean I would hope that if I had a dog that was suffering that was in pain that wasn't going to get better and just every day was getting worse that I would pull that trigger, pull, not trigger, like not the proverbial trigger, but, the, but pull the trigger and make the decision to humanely let that dog go to the other side. And I truly believe that, that dogs do go to heaven. I mean, I, there's no proof of it, but there's no proof against it either. So I always look at it that way. So I do believe that if God gave us these creatures to give us this un, undenying love that is so powerful, that there is no way, no way that those animals are not going to be with us in the next life. And I don't care what your belief is. Um, that's what I believe in. And I'm not trying to share my belief or convince you of anything. But if you really love your dog, I would hope that you would want to know that that love will continue um, afterwards. And it's, what, it's the only thing that keeps me going. It keeps me going when I get really sad. But um, 
think about that, right? So if, so if the dog is suffering, if the dog is um, having a hard time with things, I got one thumb down. I must be from somebody who doesn't like my comment about God, but that's fine. Um, I, I'll, I'll get 10 thumbs up for all the people who gave me one thumbs down for not liking God or talking about God. Um, I'm not going to answer any questions that aren't uh, you know, to the scope of the show because I can't, um, I can't do it because this is a podcast. So um, I'll keep the questions based on that. Um, if there are any other questions, um, yeah, Kate, great question, great way to say it. And that was an old Roy Rogers uh, statement that said, uh, if dogs don't go to heaven, then I want to go where the dogs go. Or Will Rogers. I think it's Will Rogers. Anyway, so anyway, there you go. That's that. Um, the, it was the same person who gave two, th gave two thumbs down, right? But it only registers one thumbs down, it was, so that I know it's the same person. And I, I wonder if I can check out who did that. Okay, now we got two thumbs down. But um, you know what? I don't give a crap. I, could never, I never really did anything in my life to uh, win the approval of other people, and I think that has won me the approval of more people because um, I speak the truth. Some people can't handle the truth. That's really the problem. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, if you want to hear the truth, robertcabral.com. That's where you're going to hear it. That's where you're going to get the best dog training advice here on YouTube. My podcast available on Google, Apple, and, and anywhere podcasts are really found. Love being here. Love helping you guys with your dogs. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for coming by on this very unannounced uh, live podcast. That is episode number 59. And I will see you next time. Take care.